Welcome back to Fire to Fork. Well, not Fire to Fork. I'm Harry from Fire to Fork. This is modified number something or other. I'm going to call it 150 because that's what we're looking at today. Uh, we're going to wait till dark so Ronnie actually gets. The jump starting. You, this you, is. You've been stitching me up for the last <laughs> two days. <laughs> All right, keep going then. G'day, ladies and gents. Welcome to another episode of Modified. I'm with my good mate Harry. We're out in the bush, we're out of camp. Harry, how are you, mate? Very good, mate. How are you? I don't know why I'm asking you that because I've been hanging out for two days with you. <laughs> <laughs> I, know so you like, I know you bloody well. <laughs> we always do this. <laughs> this Peacock Blue Peacock Land Black. Cruiser Prado. Yep. What is it set up for and what's your concept behind it? Um, I'm calling it the 10 year tourer because it has a nice ring to it, but also the premise behind it is I'm designing a car or building a car to last 10 years of almost commercial level use. I go out in the bush and I film for a living um, and I go in remote areas and so I want to be able to carry lots of food, lots of basically lots of cold storage, have lots of power for charging things, uh, also lots of fuel range, kind of do a lot of things and do it very reliably. I don't want to be replacing stuff out in the bush, getting stuck out in the bush. If I'm without my car, I'm without my you know, livelihood. So <clears throat> nothing on it is uh, poor quality. It doesn't mean I've got the most expensive, it just means that I've got the best quality, I think, for the application. A lot to cover. This rig is cool, so let's check it out. Cheers. Let's do it. Here we are with a vehicle that is stationary, yet it looks like it's moving. <laughs> That's the feeling I'm getting when I'm looking at the car. Yeah, I did try and make it look like it was going fast while it was standing still. It's a little bit of a sort of American influence, I think, like the amber lights, the gold wheels, all that it kind of stuff. It does look a bit American. Yeah. But um, it looks cool with an, with an Aussie twist. Yeah. On yeah. a Japanese vehicle. Yeah, very multicultural. Multicultural. Very multicultural. <clears throat> Talk us through the bar. Uh, the bar is an off-road animal steel bar. It's the Toro model. Um, I was one of the first to get one. Uh, I waited out because I really wanted a bar with hopes because I hit animals. It just, it's just a reality of remote touring. Yep. Um, Not yeah. something we like doing, but it happens. <clears throat> Absolutely, yeah. So the bar, I think, looks really cool. Um, it's proper three and five mil steel. For reference, an ARB is two and a half. Um, it's really thick. It's really heavy duty. It, like, it is rock solid. There's no flex in it. Um, it comes with giant recovery points. Comes winch compatible. You know, you can put spotties in it, internal light bar, all that kind of stuff. It's quite heavy. Um, it's about 80 to 90 kilos. So really yeah. quite heavy. Well, then you know, it's solid steel, then, aren't you? <laughs> That's it. And because it has so little gap, I mean, I, I can't even get my fingers between the, the grill and the front. Uh, because it has so little gap, it needs to be absolutely rock solid because if it starts to give, it's going to crunch your car and that kind of. Sure. You know. And as you said, accommodating there for a light bar, and we have a winch that yeah, looks winch. like a big bugger. Yeah, 12,000 pound Bush Ranger. Okay. Um, so no, no double line pull <clears> for you? <laughs> no, no, it's a beast. It, it actually, it really pulls hard. I pulled a giant log out of the way the other day. Um, and single line pull, it was dragging the car pretty happily. Nice. The opposite direction. You know, like dragging the car towards the log instead of the log towards me. <laughs> so, <laughs> log was heavier. Yeah. The bash plate comes with the bar and then underneath there's more, there are more bash plates. So uh, that's- All the way to the transfer case. Yeah, off-road animal bash plate and then um, k -on underbody protection beyond there. Let's go down to the side because you have a substantial side step down here. I do, yeah. They look pretty solid, mate. They are, mate. Um, I've landed them on the on the sliders once. Um, they're technically a side step, but everyone I know who's got them has dropped them on rocks, and they're totally fine. They're made by a company called Donald Industries. Uh, you can only find them on Facebook. Um, they are one guy in Bullsbrook. He makes them in his backyard, but he's a professional fabricator. He gets it all laser cut. Then he gets them really well powder coated. Um, and underneath, I have chucked some like Rock 9 Light Force lights that connect to my original valet wiring. So as I open the door at night, you can't see it now, but as I open the door at night, they illuminate um, and it looks really cool. It connected to my proximity key, walk over to the car, they illuminate. Yeah, sure. but no, uh, they're, they're really solid and I wanted one with a nice big step um, and also one that wouldn't let rocks and stuff go up because my old car got absolutely hammered. Sure, and you've got enough step to reach your roof rack. Yeah, I do. Which we'll go to next. Sounds good. Front runner 
little roof rack platform system that they've got. Uh, I've put on the expedition rails uh, and I've actually put on extra bars at the back um, for wood carrying and stuff because I found that the gaps in them were a little bit too much and all the falls on my on my roof. So, but at the front, you'll see I've got you know the normal spacing, mm -hmm. save weight on the front, extra weight on the rear, uh, and that's sort of my load area. Front is you know solar and that's a Max Trax bag from Grab Me Gear. Um, sure. I've also got my junction box on the far side and of course the awning. What's the junction box for? That's for all my lights underneath, so all the little light force lights. Ah, so all the lights in the roof rack and you got a light in the awning as well? I take uh, it? No light in the awning uh, okay. and it also does the solar. Ah, right, right. Yeah, okay. so it's basically a seven core bit of wiring that comes up and then it all gets junctioned off nicely and neatly and that's all. And a convenient place to put All Heiner's work, of course. Cool. So four max tracks in there. I found that really stopped wind noise on the roof, really dramatically. Yeah, they create a bit of wind noise. I yeah, think. they're just little whistles on top, the little the studs. Mm. Uh, on the front, I've got the um, <clears throat> what was that? The wind deflector, which comes on a rubber mount that actually touches the bonnet, sorry, the roof. Um, and under that, they put a strip of good quality PPF, so paint protection film, sure. um, to stop it from actually hurting the roof. Um, this is a nice high ro load rating. But I'll be honest, it's not why I bought it. I didn't, I'd love to get on my high horse and say, oh, well, I checked all my load ratings and, you know, I, <laughs> I, I, I did this because I absolutely nailed it the first time. The truth is I actually really liked the accessories it came with. Mm -hmm. um, I liked the adjustability uh, and particularly I liked something else I'll show you a little bit later on the table. Okay. I like how you can put all these extra slats in for yeah. wood carrying because that's how I've uh, damaged roofs on trailers before. Absolutely. Throwing wood on there. Yep. And then... It's so easy. Ten k's later, mate. Scratch all the paint. You drive on corrugations with with wood and a and a gap that's, you know, 120 mil. Trouble. You know, it's pretty. Unless you have big logs, it's it's there's a fair chance something's mm. going to move and fall. So yeah, having that sort of solid platform at the back is really really good. Tires and lift. Yes. One thing I can say is, Harry has done a lot of travelling and take suspension and tyres seriously. Very seriously. So take it away, mate. I didn't mess around. Um, so tyres, actually, actually same as what you run on the Hilux. So they are Maxxis Razor 28570R17 on the 17 inch rim. The rims are a Method 703, uh, oh sorry, Maxxis Razor Mud Terrain, I should mention that. Uh, the, the Method 703, which is a zero offset 17 by eight and a half. The wheels, Method 703s, uh, the good, good thing about them is they've got a really, really tight bead. So as you know, yesterday we ran 9 PSI on the beach, flying around, no problem. Um, and they take 140 PSI to even go on the bead. So that's above actually most tyre manufacturer specifications. That is crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. So um, they should be really good. I, I, look, I've never had an issue um, and I've pushed them quite hard. So mm. I'm going to say they work really well. Sure. Um, Let's jump to your suspension. Yeah. Knowing you, you definitely need remote res for the travel that you do. I definitely do. So take it away. So I use a Dobinson's 3500 GVM upgrade kit, uh, which includes 400 kilo constant load rear coils, 150 constant load front, uh, and then their MRA fully adjustable shocks. So that's the three-way adjustable. I think there's 45 stages of adjustment. Uh, it's like 20 for some, 15 for some, and 10 for some. Wow, it's that's crazy. crazy. There's so much adjustment. Do you adjust it? Uh, I did. So when I first got it, you know, it wasn't right. Uh, as in, it just it wasn't adjusted for the weight that I had on it. And as I added things, as I moved things around, yeah, I've adjusted it quite a lot. Um, and now don't touch it. Mm. So once you've got it dialed in, it's all good. Okay. Uh, and I'm really, really, I'm really happy with how it rides. And you've driven it; um, it rides well. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It was pretty fun driving that hill too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> this car definitely has comfort over the Hilux. That's for sure. So I would definitely recommend if you're going to put this much weight in a vehicle, this is 3.1 ton, so it's about 750 kilos over standard. Uh, you definitely need good suspension. Oh, and the other thing I've got is airbags. So I've got Airbag Man 
um, assistant or uh, sort of in coil airbags um, and I use them all the time and it's really good for adjusting for trailers and adjusting for different loads and all that kind of stuff really really sure, useful sure. I actually use them a lot more than I thought I would you're saying you're at 3.1 are you 3.1 yeah and what is the GVM 2990 but, but and what's your new GVM 3.5 Three five. So three one okay. fully loaded. All right. It's good to see you haven't gone two to three five. No, exactly. People yeah. have three five. They'll go to the three five. Yeah. So I can still hitch a caravan on the back of this with two people in the car. Sure. That's that's GVM. And you can still fill your car with occupants too. Yes, exactly. I can fill my car with occupants and put a camper trailer on mm. the back, and I'm fine. Yeah, I'll be there. So good. Start with lights. So I've got the Nighthawk Bush Ranger. Bush Ranger Nighthawk VLI 9 inch spotties. Um, some people are worried that the 9 inch will interfere with the radar, which is in the badge. It doesn't, just so you know. Uh, it's on this bar, I don't know about other bars. Uh, I've also got the 24 and a half inch uh, night, uh, VLI Bush Ranger light bar, and that's a full spread. These are both full spot, all with amber covers, as you've seen. Um, I'm actually gonna do a whole video on amber covers because I think they're fantastic and I wanna explain why I like them. Uh, it does physically take light away from your light, but it, you retain your night vision. So you can actually see more despite there being less light because mm. uh, the light is different. Uh, didn't go for a roof light bar this time. I just, there's plenty of light here um, and I, I couldn't actually make it fit nicely and I think it'll whistle. Um, you know, it'll just, it's just going to have roof, uh, wind sent up under the deflector into the light bar. I, I just thought, you know, sure. I, I've, I'm very happy with the light I have. Mm. Um, comms, very simple, exactly the same as what you've got. <laughs> so the GME 370 unit inside and a 2.1 DBI aerial on the, um, on the bull bar. Did uh, you get the combo so you got the 6.6 .6 and the 2.0? No, I just got the 2.1. Okay. I, I don't, I, I've never really needed much more than this. Um, yeah, I might get a 4.5 or a 6.6 .6 in the future, but for now, this is perfectly adequate. Um, I've never had an issue with, with range on these, on the bull bar. Um, and I know you like them on the roof, but um, I find they hit too much stuff and they make too much noise. I think, right. Every time your antenna hits something, I think I've crashed the car. <laughs> it's like, dun, 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 dun. So, and I'm lazy, I can't be bothered putting it up and down every time I want to go in my driveway. So I, I can't get him. I, 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 I park in a carport and I have to fold it down mm. every day Makes if sense. I want to use it. So you've wrapped the vehicle for my understanding. I have, yeah. So I've used a kit called a Bush Wraps, B-U-S, Bush Wrap with a Z at the end. Um, it's a really cheap kit. Uh, it, is a, it self heals in the sun so you can scratch it and then as it gets hot you can either use a heat gun or just leave it in the sun and it will the scratches go away obviously only to, only to a certain extent but this is the worst color vehicle for off-road <laughs> it gets so badly pinstriped and it still looks immaculate because of the wrap so definitely recommend it if you've got a, um, a dark color there is actually one worse color black yeah if you get a black vehicle jet black <laughs> is the worst color it's pretty close So under the bonnet, I've kept it really stock. Um, the engine and gearbox haven't been touched, although there are plans to do a gearbox lockup kit from Richards. Um, uh, I have done diff and transfer case and gearbox breathers, so they're just here, uh, and then I've got a secondary fuel filter just here. Uh, Common rail diesels absolutely need that. And the only other thing I'm planning to do under the bonnet is a snorkel. So I've got a moonlight fabrication snorkel on the way. Satin black should look awesome. Uh, but I'm leaving the stock airbox, even though it's crap, purely to keep my warranty. Seven year engine and drivetrain warranty is just not worth risking on this thing. The weather's turned on us, but that's all good. We got shelter. And the camera crew are huddled underneath the Hilux shelter as well. <laughs> it's a very small awning, but it's it's enough space it's for It's doing the job. It's doing yeah. the job. <laughs> At least we can move it around too. Yeah, exactly. Let's get to the back of the car, mate. Yeah, on the outside we've got a bin bag. So this is a PM canvas bin bag with some extra pockets. Um, I've had to relocate my camera. Ignore that bracket. There is a proper K-on bracket in the mail on the way that's going to be that relocates it properly and puts it down here. Um, other than that, just some extra plugs for access to my lithium and then to like my alternator. 
Uh, so for charging a trailer or for just powering things outside. So I've got two Andersons, there's another one on the other side. What's the red one for? That's connected to my lithium, so it's like for auxiliary power, so I can put like cigarette lighter plugs, uh, I can run a cord to like, when I tow my army trailer, I th often throw my little old angle in it, so I'll just run a, a, an extension cord to the angle. Sure. And run it off that. Sure, or in hot climates you carry that fan. I carry the fan, yeah. You run it in your swag. E exactly, yeah, yeah. So whatever I want to run off the outside, it's just down there. Out of the way, and then look, there are a couple of little things inside. Um, a couple of little things inside. Yeah, look, nothing, nothing major. <laughs> <laughs> so, Pro Camp Solutions draw system, full custom, built to exactly my specs. Um, the main things were that it needed to fit this fridge and all my electrical stuff on the other side, which we'll see later on, um, and obviously be very practical um, and have a lot of bench space. So bench space, start with the K-On table. Um, so that's really useful. I use this for just quick on the go stuff. I also keep my chopping boards in it. And there's, I'm, I've actually got a drinks holder coming here from K-On as well, that nice. you can put your, mm. put your beers in there. So it's not just the table, it's a storage as well. That's cool. I didn't yeah. know you had that behind there. Yeah, it's great. And these are really big, bulky things that take up heaps of room in your drawers yeah. and actually really get in the way. So having that flat storage is really good. And it's then like next level table. Cubbies behind there as well. So the drawers themselves. Um, Before we get to the drawers, let's have a look at the. You want to have a look at this one? Yeah. <laughs> you can see what's in here. All right, so Snowmaster 81.5 litre traveller fridge uh, with a table on the end. What do you got in there, mate? Few, um, Do you want few, one? A few lemon squashes. <laughs> <laughs> I know he's always got beer. <laughs> a little bit of shameless product placement of the... Uh, oh, get, yeah? Get these on Ronnie's merch store. Yeah, magnetic. Cheers, mate. Yeah, cheers. <laughs> actually stuck really well there. Mm. <laughs> it does stick well, actually. That sticks... Mm. Um, is this so a dual zone? It is dual zone. So this is a freezer, this is a fridge. 42 litre... Fridge, uh, 39 litre, or 43 litre fridge, 39 litre freezer. Um, so it's it's a pretty pretty beasty thing. Separate controls. I found it's been the most reliable fridge I've had, and also the fridge. Oh, actually, no, that's not true. I can't say it's the most reliable fridge I have because I've I've got a 20 year old angle that hasn't broken. So that's the most reliable fridge I've ever owned. This one has been flawless in the time I've owned it. Um, all they've done is broken the cord, which is not the fridge's fault. <laughs> but this thing has performed better in hot climates than any other fridge I've ever used, including the angle. Uh, in 43 degrees um, Kimberley heat, it didn't drop below negative 15. Table on the end, I, all my surfaces are stainless steel, always. Um, and under there is actually storage, which is Look really out. useful. All my you know, cables and, oh, sorry, all my hoses and things. Um, and that all connects to sort of the pump system. You can put this away like that. Very convenient for doing whatever you want. Hoses in there are for the pump system. I've got two pumps. So one is for this, which is just my normal water pump. That's on a nine metre hose reel uh, with a bidet tap on the end. <laughs> I've got a second pump, which is for showering. So I can pick up out of a bucket. My hot, that's my hot water system. And I can also refill my own tank. K-On underbody 30 litre tank, stainless. Um, the only way to fill it is with a tap. There's no like pour option. So you need it pressurized water going into it. So I can put input there, output there, fill the tank up much easier. Cool. Um, because it means I can carry a jerry and actually fill my tank. Not yeah, have you to, to switch to jerry. Go to a well or something and fill it up again. Exactly. Or I can just, yeah, or as I say, just use bucket water. So I can mm. use bucket as my source. Um, but the only way to do that without contaminating the tank is to have a two pump system. Yeah, sure. Um, then the drawers are just normal drawers, but the, one of the sort of the party piece of these is they actually come out pretty much all the way. I mean, that's 15 mil from the end. You can ac I can access the very back of the drawer, which is means you can put bulky things at the back, which is where you want it. You want it closer to the center of the car. Yeah, sure. So those little details were really important to me. Yeah. Um, tools in here. I was expecting to see a lot more cooking gear than tools. Well, I do have a fair bit of cooking gear, but not as much as you might think. And I've also got a lot less tools than my previous setup. Being a brand new car, uh, I don't have to carry as much. I carry some basic spares. I carry enough to get myself and other people out of trouble, but I don't have to carry, you know, a new everything and every single tool under the sun, which is a really nice change. Do you still have your 10 mil socket? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> this is my only cooking drawer and it's not even that full. The reason for that is because I don't carry gas. 
I don't carry any kind of a Weber or a cooking device. My cooking device is actually quite simple. It's basically a camp oven and a grill. Mm. The and rest a fireplace. Of, and a fireplace, yeah. So I often carry a fire pit, but in winter I tend not to because I don't need to. I can just light a fire on the ground and it's, you get a lot more warmth, obviously, from a big ground fire. All I have really is a couple of grills and a camp oven, um, and the rest of it's all done on fire. You know, I throw a fire pit in from time to time, absolutely. But um, there's, remember when we did the Kimberley, we had a lot less stuff from when I was cooking for you than you normally would in your Patriot. Yes, yes, very, very true, very true. No Weber. <laughs> <laughs> all my cooking gear takes up a lot less room than a Weber, yeah. I reckon. And then the top is sort of my living stuff. So I have, you know, uh, insect repellent, I've got a little speaker. I do have some tea and coffee in there, but it's that sort of uh, my sat phone, general living camping stuff. That's what that, uh, lithium jump starter, yeah. stuff like that. Um, and in case you run out of toilet paper, you've got a sat phone. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or beer, most importantly, if I run out of beer. <laughs> um, then on the other side is another nine meter air hose reel. Um, and that's connected to my air compressor, so it's an ARB twin with a four-liter tank. Mm. Um, and that's just on a switch here. Um, You've actually used that a lot. I use it to pump up the fire a lot. I use it to clean my kitchen. Um, I use it for much more than people think I will. Um, it's really, really useful having mm. compressed air. And it's fast, of course. Especially for fires. Really good for fires, particularly for me. Um, it's, like, it's, like having, it's like having a hot wind or, or wind coming through. It's like the dial on the oven. Pretty much, yeah. Turbo. Um, up here, I just use crash pods for everything. Um, that's an Osbry camp bry, and there's a travel bry underneath. I've got my soda stream, which fits perfectly in the small crash pod. <laughs> I know you're going to like that. Yes. <laughs> I don't think it'll be long before you've done that. No, I didn't know it could fit in there. That's yeah, cool. It's that's bloody good. Uh, my pantry, which just has sort of sauces and with some pickles and some oil and salt and pepper and all that kind of stuff. This is my shopping crash pod so i actually take this to the supermarket instead of a like your know, reasonable bag i'll take this fill it with all my stuff in the supermarket at the checkout and then chuck it straight in my car and go that's not a bad idea it's really good so that's this, this it's the end of the trip we've got some wraps that's all that's left mm. which i'll take on the next trip but other than that it's all it's all empty and ready to go and the last one is my ryobi gear i mean being a prado you would go to the shops, so... Oh uh, yeah, very regular yeah. at Coles. Coles, Louise. <laughs> <laughs> Big shopping trolley. <laughs> My Roby gear, blower, drill, uh, grinder, USB charger, a couple of batteries, um, you know, pretty basic stuff. Uh, and then in here, I've got another crash pad bag which just has my foil and oh, um, you know, that sort yeah. of stuff. Light switches, so I've got Light Force 20s, a Rock 20s on each side and then a couple on the rear. So look right, look left. Drinks light over the fridge, snacks light over the snack side, and uh, they work really well. I tend to focus them up on the awning like this, um, and that gives it a really nice, warm, gentle light mm. over the area as opposed to a full on light in your face. Um, yeah, or anyone walking past. Yeah, exactly. You got exactly. these custom switches, mate, too, eh? Yep, they're from the Lightforce website. They were really cheap and they're really good. 50 bucks for four switches, two USB points. Uh, I always put cigarette lighter points over USBs next to it because I can always throw USB adapters in, sure. whereas I can't always plug a 12 volt thing Makes in. Sense. Uh, airbags, you'll see on one side at the moment I've got it on heaps of pressure and the other side is completely empty. That's to level the car out. So mm. they're just airbag man um, in, in spring helpers. You can see it's still not perfectly level, but it helps a lot. It's pretty damn close. If I, if I drop that, we're on a big hill. If I drop that right down, you'll see the car just yeah. really, really goes down. Just that bit of extra adjustment makes a huge difference. Sure. Um, so I usually run about 15 to 20 PSI in the, in the rear bags, and that just helps with the ride as well. Mm. Um, if you're towing, do you put more in? Yeah, absolutely. So if I'm towing the boat, which weighs about a ton, that's quite a lot of, quite a lot of ball weight, um, I'll run about 30, 35 PSI, but they're good for 80. Oh, and of course, the table. So front runner rack, the reason I got it was because of this big, really, really useful stainless steel table. Um, and I absolutely love it. I wouldn't be with it anywhere without it. And in fact, I can put hot stuff on it. The fact that it's easy to clean. The only kind of downside I've found is because it's outside, uh, it does get a little bit dusty, but it's no worse than putting your table on a roof rack anyway. Sure, sure. 
That's actually a really handy spot for a wagon. So handy. Because where else are you going to put it? Exactly. It's You can't put it inside. It's a pain in the ass. Mm. Uh, putting it on top of the rack, it takes up so much real estate. And then you have to throw stuff on top of it. You can't access it. All that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Prime of VX life. Interior time. Yeah, mate. Uh, not a lot actually going on here. That's the beauty of modern cars. You don't have to add too much. Exactly, yeah. Like stereos so, and all that thing, yeah? I mean, I use a... Uh, my I use my standard in cab system for most of my navigation. I have Hema on my phone, but unfortunately it doesn't work with CarPlay. So I use a, a an app called Gaia GPS, which has full offline satellite maps. So like actual sat view, which is awesome. Uh, I have my GME 370, um, which is on the magnetic mount there, and then I have a little Uniden dash view 30 here and on the, on the rear as well so dash cam front and rear uh usual stuff controller for my for my throttle controller my dimmer for my spotlights um oh, you can dim your spotlights yeah they've got a built-in dimmer yeah cool. um and then a red arc tow pro um and that's honestly about it it's very very basic um it's basic here maybe, but all your power centrals behind your seat from my understanding, right? That's exactly right. So I don't even have like a permanent power source here or anything. I've just got a, a normal cigarette lighter plug. Mm. Every, all the all the party is having happening in the back. <laughs> so what do you so, got what do you got behind the seat is, then? This car is a mullet. A mullet. <laughs> Business at the front, party at the back. <laughs> that's a that's a good analogy. <laughs> So in the back, I have a Red Arc Manager 30 with TVMS. So that gives me the nice display from the Red Vision system. Um, I've got an Amptron 150 amp hour lithium battery, which has just been phenomenally use good, useful and good. Uh, I've got a 1500 watt Red Arc inverter. I've got the ARB twin compressor with the tank. I've got the Egan power board, which is awesome. That made wiring an absolute dream. Also got a GPS tracker in the back, so if someone pinches the car, I can keep an eye on it. Um, and uh, and just a few power points and things like that. But no, it's it's all nice and neatly done, all done by Clarman, your mate and our mate. Um, He's a wizard. Who's, who's an absolute wizard and uh, was disgusted when I did like three things by myself. I showed him. He was like, <laughs> what, what, what's, your car's going to catch fire. Like, step aside, I'll fix it. <laughs> that doesn't sound like you at all <laughs> but no that's that's about it it's pr pretty simple inside so i've just got like you know normal display but i've got four cameras in this car so this shows me under side under each um wing mirror uh, which actually isn't working very well because they're folded out so if i fold them out properly it'll give me the proper lines um, and then that's my front camera which is all covered in crap um, and then it gives me you know, all my angles and stuff like that. I can change the views, have it however I want, but uh, I do actually find that really useful when I'm off-roading. Come yes. from an 80, 80 series Land Cruiser. Yep. And you've now gone to a Prado. It's my first Prado, yeah. I've had three cruisers and this is my first Prado. Why did you choose the Prado out of all the options that there were? Well, safety was actually a huge concern. Um, a friend of ours was killed a few months ago um, in an 80 series, exactly like my old one, and it was um, a big eye-opener for us. So we went, well, let's try and get something. It is really safe. We've got a, a baby on the way and that kind of stuff. So I thought, well, let's get something that's safe, but also very capable and good. I wanted a wagon, um, uh, and the 200 series was obviously an option, but to get the safety features and the radars and all that kind of stuff that you get in this, you have to go to a Sahara, which is 136 grand. And that is a fairly big, tough swill, pill to swallow. And we actually, we, we just can't afford that. Um, so we thought for a lot less money, let's get something very capable, nearly as roomy, um, uses a lot less fuel, has a lot better fuel range, has a wheel on the back, which, you know, just the configuration just really works. Um, so yeah, that's why the Prado. Best thing about Prado? Fuel range, fuel economy, and the f configuration of the rear with the wheel on the back. Um, they are, oh, and also just the, the refinement. It is so much more refined than the competitors that's what that's what that's what i found you know the 
the only ones that kind of compete are like the Everest, which is a bit smaller, um, the Y62, which obviously uses a bit of fuel, uh, the 200 series. But I, I, the Fortuna, I know you've done your comparison, but I, I found the refinement in this was definitely worth the extra value, as well as the considerable increase in fuel range and ability to easily modify it. Let's talk about your fuel range, because that's something within cover. What is your range now with all the mods on it? The range is currently uh, theoretical 1,300 kilometres on the tank. So I could do about 11. Uh, it's got a 150 litre tank, so whatever the um, 12, if I'm fully loaded and driving, like, you know, making good time, let's say. Worst thing about the Prado? Uh, worst thing about the Prado, I don't like... And it's, a, it's the worst thing about modern cars, I think, actually, is that is I don't like the thin panels. They dent really easily. Um, that's really annoying. And actually, the worst thing about the Prado is something really strange, but annoys the hell out of me. And that is that the inbuilt sound system in it is amazing, but the Bluetooth and the hands-free audio for my phone, not for music, but for calls, is unusable over 100 k's an hour it's too quiet and I can't use it and I work on the road a lot. So I'm spending a lot of time on the road, perfect time to have, have my calls, I can't use it. I have to use earphones. Interesting. In, you know, a very top end car. That's really interesting actually. <laughs> Pain in the ass. Wow. <laughs> best mod so far. The best mod's so hard. Um, I have agonized over this and uh, it's going to be kind of a cop out because it's actually a mod I had on my old car and it's the thing we're sitting under and it's the awning. It's the thing that brings me the most joy in this car. It's not the most expensive thing on the car. It's not the most elaborate thing on the car. Nothing like that. But that awning, 18 seconds out, 40 seconds away. It's a Bush Company 270 XT, no poles. I love it. It's the thing that most people also come away from being around my car and going that's that's awesome i want that um and i've i've had it for over a year and i just can't fault it worst mod you've done to the vehicle maybe something you've removed for whatever reason or something you're thinking about removing if there is any um i've made mistakes along the way but i haven't actually removed anything um one thing that was really annoying at the start was actually the water hose reel because for the first couple of months it tasted like horrible plastic and it's kind of cleaned itself out and I've cleaned the whole water system out but initially that was the thing I was most excited about and then kind of most disappointed by. Um, I definitely recommend if you have one of these water tanks have a tap underneath it which they come with. Uh, use the tap underneath for your drinking water, use the hose water for, for your cleaning water. However, after a few months of using it, that water taste has gone away of using it regularly. That plasticky taste has gone away of using it regularly. So yeah, that's, that's sort of what I'd say. Coming from an 80 series, which was very capable off-road. Extremely, yeah. Even as overweight as it was, yep. let's be honest there. Oh yeah, <laughs> so, totally. This well-balanced build, that's how I see it. Are you surprised with the off-road capability? And how does it compare to the 80 series? I w look, on the beach, there's no comparison at all. This thing absolutely destroys the 80. Um, it's got so much more grunt, it's got a lot less weight, uh, it's a lot more balanced, it's, it's, just, it's just nicer to drive off. On the beach, on mud, on touring stuff, this thing is just 10 times more capable because it is more powerful and it is, um, so I should probably mention, this is the updated motor. This is the 150 kilowatt, 500 newton meter motor. Um, big difference there in most things. Um, then it goes the opposite in, on rocks. You can't really go past solid axles and twin lockers for rocks. You just can't get away from the fact that they flex better um, and they handle better in rocks. Uh, however, for something that is only rear locked, it's extremely impressive and I haven't found it lacking. I have not once found, oh, actually I really missed the 80 series here. That would have been so much easier. I just had to relearn how to drive. Uh, I find myself, I go on to those side angles, which I never would have done because I had coils and solid axles, um, because I thought I'd roll. Uh, this thing is so much more stable, so I, I just, I, it's just a different way of driving, and I feel like 
a total novice at the moment. I don't feel like I know what I'm doing, but I'm slowly getting there. Sure. What is the next big trip planned for the Prado as this first proper long distance test? Uh, first proper long distance test will be back to my old stomping ground in the Kimberley. So that's going to be in May, uh, about three weeks, Kimberley and the Pilbara, um, up and down, collaborating with a few people along the way. And that will be its first proper test. I'll be towing my old army trailer and giving it a, a proper go. And then the next one will be the four wheel drive show in Adelaide, uh, or probably something in between then, but definitely four wheel drive show in Adelaide in, in October. All right, Harry. Thanks for bringing the Prado on, Pleasure, mate. mate. It was great, good fun. So we're off to Coles next, or what? <laughs> <laughs> Got to pick the kids up from school. Now, if you want to know more about this build, you can head over to Harry's channel, because Harry's a YouTuber, just in case you didn't know. Fire to Fork. And there is a whole couple of videos on... Uh, four, five videos. Ten year build. the Ten Year Tourer. Ten Year Tourer. Yep. So head over, head over, check it out, and you'll get all the other details that may have been left out or we may have brushed over in this video. Yep. All the, all, the, all the logic behind the build. Thanks for watching another episode of Modified. We'll see you next time. See you then.